my friend who worked at Chicken Licken at the time told me, look, I have a friend who's opening a radio station called Pulse FM. Hmm. She told me, why don't you try out? I heard they're looking for presenters. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I just need a job, so sour. Let mm. me go try out. Mm. And I did. Mm. And baptism by fire. The next day they said, why don't you come for the next interview? The next interview was on air. Welcome back to Development Dynamics. I'm your host, Maxi. In this season, in this 2023 season, we are covering lots of incredible guests whose stories are meant to inspire us. And for our three kind of audiences, for the younger audience who follow us and who listen to the journeys of uh, stalwarts, like the one we'll be having today, for practitioners who are in the field, who are navigating different transitions, but also for leaders who've made it, who are corporate leaders, who are industry, um, industry giants in their own way, we thank you for following Development Dynamics among all the guests we've had. This particular one that you're having today gives me chills <laughs> just to know that um, she could accept to be part of this conversation. But at Didi with Maxi in a nutshell, we host um, individuals in the social impact development sector. And because we realize a lot more has been serialized for musicians, for artists, for other kinds of personalities in the corporate and political world. But for those who are making real impact in the social, um, in the social and development sector, not as much of their stories is told. So in this, in this particular season, we'll be going through the journey <clears throat> from birth to date of a particular individual whom you know as a media practitioner, as a leading voice uh, across the Kenyan and international airwaves. But also, she has been doing a lot of work in this development sector. Her footprints are printed um, with lots of young people, young girls and young women in this country and beyond. And ladies and gentlemen, here we go with our guest for today, Janet Mbugwa. Thank you, Maxi. Thank you for accepting to join us. Yeah. Uh, you can tell I'm nervous because uh, it's you that no, you're hosting. No pressure. <laughs> Thank you for... It's Jano, not Janet. Oh, Jano. In this setup. <laughs> even that, that's, that, that's even more pressure. <laughs> uh, but thank you for um, choosing to document your story with us. Um, I think the idea of being in conversation here is to say, if you're to write your book, your own autobiography, how would it be, you know? And so mm. we are taking a very autobiographical approach to yep. this part of storytelling. So if uh, on this end, I'm, 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 I'm the publisher. Okay. You are the, the story is yours. So we are I, trying to just uh, dig deep into your story, your journey. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe you can start to, before Janet is born, what kind of family uh, and situation where you uh, was your family in so that they, 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 they and mm -hmm. then you can walk us through your very early childhood wow um what a question <laughs> <laughs> like let's go way back way uh, first back. of all thank you for having me um and so i'll try and see way back dad dad is has had a very interesting life mm -hmm. because when there was some form of uncertainty in Kenya in our history, right. when we were transitioning to independence, yes. there was a group of people who, if you had friends further afield, you felt like it was a good idea to maybe put one of your children on a ship uh -huh. and literally ship them right. off. And so dad was one of the people who was who shipped off to, to India. Oh, to in oh man. <laughs> yeah, okay. he was shipped off to India uh -huh. to, um, um, Care, care. I'll try and remember the name of the place. But he was very young. What was he doing there? He was schooling. He was he was taken to oh. school. You know how your parents say, I want you to have an opportunity. Yes. We don't know how things were going. His dad was somebody who was self-made and dealt in business and was able right. to do some work with people yeah. abroad. Did he come from, was it like a large family? Dad's dad wasn't, a, Dad's my dad had about five siblings. Okay. Um, and... This was Embu, by the way. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. Not necessarily Embian, but we were born. He was born and in raised Embu. in Embu. Oh, okay. Mom and dad are both from Kiambu, but. Yeah. Um, ah, yeah, you're a Kiambu girl. <laughs> Kiambu girl. All right. But he was born and raised in Embu, so as far yeah. as I'm concerned, Shad yeah. is Embu. That's yeah. all I've ever known. Okay. So he was shipped there. Yeah. And interestingly enough, he was in class with um, Farouk Balsara, who is better known as Freddie Mercury of Crew. Oh. How insane is that? Oh, wow. And he. <laughs> 
I told him you need to find the photo. Oh dear. Please. Yes. And he said it's funny because even then he had a, a voice. Like ah. he had this beautiful voice and he used to oh, like singing as a kid. Yeah. So that's a fun fact mm, about my dad. That's really nice. That's he, a good history. That's a really good you. history. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he came back and went to Prince of Wales School, uh-huh. which is now Nairobi School. Mm. And he was among the first few Africans. Yeah. So he's had a very interesting life. But exposed. Very exposed. Yeah. Um, and so that's him. And I think I took a lot of things from him, independence. Yeah. I started working when I was 19, which yeah. I guess I'll come to later. Yeah. But a lot of my independence streak and ability to be self, mm. um, self-driven. Sus- self-driven and self-sustaining. Mm. And as much as it's from both my parents, mm-hmm. a lot of it is from him. From, mm-hmm. And even now, I still draw a lot of inspiration. Mm. We still have a lot of conversations That's about good. investments, ETC. That's good. He's the one who was like, if you want to take a gap year from yeah. school, you'll work. Oh, so. wow. Mm. So mm. that's dad. Mm. Mom <coughs> was from a massive family, mm. like just huge. <laughs> Her dad, like many other of our forefathers, yeah. had several wives yes. and then several children from the oh, several wives. Goodness. So her mom, my mm-hmm. maternal grandmother, mm-hmm was called Wamuni. My middle name is Wamuni. Mm. And it's a very unique Kikuyu name because it's more of a nickname, mm. which is basically inspired from like Tavuni, which is soap oh. and cleanliness and purity. Oh, look at that. Um, and she was very passionate about social justice. Okay. Believe it or not. And look she said, whoever is named after me will follow this path. Oh, come on. Which I know it sounds like such a far-fetched thing, yeah, but yeah. when you think about it myself and my two cousins, Mm -hmm. for example, Mm -hmm. one of whom is in the US, Mm -hmm. one of whom is here. Mm -hmm. We all went into social Social. impact without knowing about it, without knowing that the other person would, and we're all named Ramu. Oh, wow. So she, mom keeps saying, she declared it with her tongue. Yeah, that's Um, prophecy. Prophecy, and she was apparently a very strong woman of faith. Yeah. And she was very discerning Mm -hmm. as well, because a lot of people have the gift of discernment, Mm -hmm. which quite a few of my family members have, including my (laughs) four-year-old son. So I take things like that seriously. It's so good that you Mm. revisit that because, I mean, as we will see in your story, a lot of that is, um, it comes from that. It comes from that, yeah. It can go without being, you know, noted. Exactly. Yeah. So that's something that I find, I I, I never got to meet her, unfortunately, Mm -hmm. but my mom talks about her a lot. Mm -hmm. She loved her a lot. They were Mm -hmm. very close, even though she died when my mom was young. Mm -hmm. But she remembers so many things like it was yesterday. And one of the things she remembers is that she professed that, prophesied that. So that's... I guess the history of now mom and dad. That, that's where, those are the two people that you come from. Those are two people that I come from, yeah. mm-hmm. um, who I still love very dearly. And I thank God every day that they're in my life. That's so good. Um, and then I, dad moved to Mombasa mm-hmm. in the 80s, mm-hmm. I would like to think, when the tea industry was opening up to, to Africans. Because mm-hmm. before it was a very British white yep. settler yeah. industry, but it started opening up. So moved there. Um, Huh. They married. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. They married in the late 70s, moved to Mombasa, married in Nairobi, yeah. worked in Nairobi, moved mm-hmm. to Mombasa. Mm. And that's where my siblings and I were born. Yeah. So my sister was born first, and then yeah. my older brother, then my twin brother and I yeah. Yeah. were the last ones. Did you come first? He came first by four, five minutes. So you're really um, the last one. Like, I'm really the last one. And I keep telling people I'm the actual <laughs> ultimate last one. And I have a right to behave like a last one. Yeah, but but you grew up as four kids together because they were not so much older than you guys. No, it's <clears throat> since my sister's, the age difference is six years mm. between us. And then mm. my brother, it's three years. Yeah. And then there's my twin and I, which yeah. is five minutes. Yeah. And we grew up in Mombasa, which I feel like is the greatest gift God gave us. All right. Because Mombasa was different. It was very, okay, it was Mm -hmm. in a sense because the community was very much people from different parts of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily Watuwa Mombasa. Mm -hmm. We're called what? Watuwa Bara. Yeah, Watuwa Bara, exactly. That is us. (laughs) But I still consider myself a Kostarian. No matter how much people are like, oh, you're Swahili, I'm like, I am Mombasa. You're Swahili. My my Swa is really good. (laughs) It might come out at some point in this interview. (laughs) But that was... It was amazing growing up there. Mm. It was uh, it was like growing up in a mini UN because we grew up with different cultures, yeah. religions, right. you know, tribes. What were they doing at the time? So different people, a lot of who I grew up with was mm-hmm. people who were in the families that were kind of doing shipping and tea. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's almost as though at that point it was really was opening amazing. up yeah. to, to mm. all of these other mm. communities. Right. And so, yeah, I went to school there, mm-hmm. Loreto Convent, Mombasa. Mm-hmm. Um, which again was a very great gift because it was such a good school. And what do you remember about oh about, about that? <laughs> Everything. Mm-hmm. Catholic school, mm. so very strict, a mm-hmm. lot of discipline, mm. values. 
teachers who genuinely believed in you, some of whom are still there. Mm -hmm. So I went back in 2015. Yeah. It was so surreal because I went as a guest of honor for prize giving and I was so emotional also because I was pregnant. Yeah. But it was <laughs> it's just very surreal to go back to a school that you went to yeah. and to be the guest of honor. It's probably one of the most it emotional is. moments of my life. Yep. And then to see some of the teachers who taught me, oh, I was still there. just a mess. Yeah. I was just like, oh my God. Oh yeah. <laughs> so what was it like? It was amazing yeah. because I feel like they really instilled certain values that were also, I guess, echoed at home. Yeah. And it was just a very healthy learning environment. I think now we can look back at some things as being problematic, whether it's like caning, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But generally, it's good memories of yeah. growing up, at yeah. going to school in Loreto you Convent. All, all, all your siblings were in the same school? All of us passed through Loreto. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody passed through. My sister did KCPE, then went to Kenya High. Yeah. My older brother did KCP, went to, I think he was in Kenya Secondary in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. And then my twin brother and I went to first Limuru, yeah. boarding school, yeah. and then high school. I don't know if I want to see which high school I was in. No, I, and we are moving even too fast. I know, I'm moving I, fast. I, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> Sorry, I'm curious. Yeah. I'm curious about the, 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 that period, your childhood. What are the things that um, surround your childhood other than school? Um, mm. Especially living in a coastal, uh, mm. you know, you're in a coastal town. Um, are you religious at the time? Is there, oh, you know? That's a good question. It Religion, faith was important. Mm -hmm. I would say faith more than religion. Mm -hmm. So we did go to church. Mm -hmm. Mom started getting really involved in the church, especially as we got older. So going to church every Sunday was something that we didn't question. And yeah. we also didn't mind because we loved Sunday school. Yeah. Um, growing up in a beach town is just the best. It is, <laughs> I can imagine. It was very, you know how people who grew up in sunny areas are? You're yeah. more laid back. Yeah. There's generally a more laid back vibe. vibe. Yeah. So I still treasure the coast mm. and I'm there every year. And yeah. now I take my sons, which of course I know I've really moved yeah, in story. Yeah. But I loved growing up in yeah. Mombasa. Yeah. My memories are just co communing with different religions and cultures. So mm. for example, we'd celebrate Diwali mm -hmm. because we had a big Indian community. Yeah. We'd celebrate Ramadan because, because we had a big Muslim. Muslim. Yeah. So I would, for and example, we would break the fast. Then there's Christmas and Easter. Yeah. And Easter was a big deal because I remember we'd do um, the Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. We'd do a service at five in the morning wow. to watch the sunrise over oh, the yeah. beach. But okay. it was a church service. Oh, it's nice. just that we'd host it at um, a hotel which was also sort of like faith based. Yeah. yeah. So my memories are honestly very largely, I, and I'm very grateful because yeah. I know that's the exception yeah. and not the norm for and a lot of people. And it's really nice. And you carry that sort of gift mm. uh, with you yeah. later in life, right? I think so. And also because my family, mm -hmm. um, my parents were kind of, they didn't really need us to be anything or anyone other than who we wanted to be. Mm. They just insisted that whatever you do, give it your best. Mm. So there wasn't a, you need to be a lawyer, mm. you need to be an astronaut. Mm. So if you want to be a mm. DJ, mm. give it your all. Oh, wow. So growing up, there wasn't any limitation to how much you could dream. There was option. And there was option. Yeah. I mean, it was never, first of all, I didn't know what I wanted to do after mm. time, mm. but I would watch a lot of media, which mm -hmm. was interesting. And mm. I always tried to look for people who looked like me. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even used to watch things like Friends mm -hmm. and Sex and the City, because mm -hmm. I'm like, no one there looks like me. Yeah. I, it's crazy, because back then, I didn't know, because it's now called Woke, yeah, but I could not watch anything that, that didn't look like me. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'd watch Oprah and yeah. um, oh, nice. Catherine Casavulli mm -hmm. and all these people. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether that planted a seed in mm -hmm. me. I was just very mm -hmm. taken in by mm -hmm. like black women mm -hmm. who had a voice, mm -hmm. yeah. interestingly mm -hmm. enough. And I didn't mm -hmm. put much thought into it, but I just remember being so drawn by yeah. them. Yeah. So what, what, what kind of clubs were you in in school? Debate. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Debate led me to my path. Uh -huh. So first, I did Red Cross mm -hmm. when I was quite young. Yeah. When I was in primary. Yeah. I did Red Cross because it was organized. Oh yeah, it was an organized. It was an organized. Yeah. I, I joined debate in high school. Mm -hmm. Literally, my first year in high school. Yeah. My geography teacher is the one who said, "You know that voice of yours? Yeah. It's that big voice." Oh, you you had it at the time. Yeah. Oh mm. my goodness. So I I was. Yeah. We, <laughs> I used to be called Frog Voice. Oh. But Nisawa, I've forgiven my enemies. Wait, from way back when you were young? Way back when I was a kid, when I was six years when, old, five years old. When did your voice break? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Look at that laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel attacked. <laughs> no, it's, I had a very, it's... yeah, I had, I had an awkward voice, so I yeah. couldn't sing. Like, you know, for Christmases or Diwali, you would mm. be singing songs with other kids. Mm. And I couldn't hit those high notes. So they would be like, frog voice, frog voice. Not alto. No. Uh, right? And then you're a kid, you're below 10. Yeah. So you don't even know all yeah. those. Mm. So I always had this voice. Mm. Um, and so it was in high school when yeah. my teacher was like, 
you should just put it to good use because sometimes you talk too much in class. So why don't you join debate? Yeah. yeah. But but yeah, generally growing up was great. I still have friends today to other people I grew up mm. with. It was mm. a very close knit community. Mm. Um, were you and your family traveling, um, moving out? Or, or, and what about the external, the extended family, especially your mom mm. saying that you say were, were meaning? What was, what, did that feature somehow in your growing up? Maybe just during weddings mm -hmm. and Christmas, because we really were just in coast. So yeah. we would go f to Embu, for example, for Christmas. Yeah. Almost every year, we mm -hmm. loved it, and, mm -hmm. I, and I miss it so much. Mm -hmm. um, and I've purposed to take my my boys. Mm -hmm. uh, extended family, yes, actually. Whenever mm -hmm. we were in Nairobi, mm -hmm. my mom has always been close to her siblings, mm -hmm. and especially her late brother, mm -hmm. her older brother. Mm -hmm. So whenever we'd visit, we'd either stay mm -hmm. at their house, mm -hmm. and so my cousins and I mm -hmm. have grown up. So there was something really close with our cousins, mm -hmm. and it was also very beautiful yeah. because we knew, or oh, we have another family. Yeah. But we were mostly in coast. We didn't do much travel other mm. than, like I mm. said, for family mm. events. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just remember just the flashes for me are just things like inter-school debate and mm -hmm. swimming galas, mm. Mm. but also just also immersing ourselves in coastal in, culture. Yeah which was also a very big thing. Yeah. So it was a mix, it was a blend of many things, which I feel like I'll remember later and be like, what Maxi, let what, me. What about the subjects? Like what were you inclined more towards when you're in your younger age? Mm. I think I've just always been curious about how people live, yeah. how people think, how people mm. are accepting of each mm -hmm. other. Mm. And I think that's why for me, growing mm. up with different religions and mm. cultures mm. informed a lot of why i have a lot of acceptance today yeah. Yeah, yeah there was nothing it's funny because even dating mm -hmm. and i was now in my teens and whatever you want to call dating yeah having boyfriends yeah as far as you can with a very strict mother yeah it was it didn't matter what they looked like they oh, could be wow. arab or indian or Afri it didn't matter oh, cool. we didn't see that until mm -hmm. i came to nairobi mm -hmm. nairobi's mm -hmm. when i was told who is this guy you're with? <laughs> so was Nairobi, you're coming to Nairobi, was that high school? That was high school. Oh, okay. And which I refused to tell us. Which I refused, you yeah, I refused. <laughs> okay. Lest I'm told, Likois was a formal group of schools. I'm like, I don't want to get into it <laughs> for right. my sanity. But yeah, so mm. we, we grew up that way. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I treasure most yeah. about it was there was just a lot of the barriers I learned later in life. Yeah. They weren't really there. Interesting. Which I know is a bit sheltered, but at the same time, where my center is also, I think, where social justice was planted because yeah. it was one of the first children's rescue centers in the country, mm. um, rehabilitating street children. Mm. And I was maybe 11 or 12 wow. when a family friend founded it. And what she did then mm. Mm. is every year she'd take her children mm. and have all her friends take in one child for a week. Oh. Right, so the one we had was Naima. I even remember, literally, oh. I was 11 years old. Mm. So you learn about every kind of way of life. Yeah, You learn about the privilege, privilege you have, but you also not. learn about what yeah. people... Luck. And so that was from a very young age. Mm. And mom has also always been that way. Mm. So I'd mm. also go with her when she was mm. visiting the kids that she was sponsoring in different schools. Mm. So growing up with a lens of acceptance yeah. and and giving but also learning mm. that informed a lot of my childhood and kind of stayed with me yeah and then manifested in different ways to date yeah yeah, yeah. and so we move now to high school your, your high school period mm. you are mentioning about your geography teacher i mean the teacher yes of yours. still in mombasa so mm -hmm. before i came to nairobi mm -hmm. i was in a high school in mombasa for mm -hmm. the first year mm -hmm. um she was the geography teacher mm -hmm. and she was strict she used to call me Mbugwa. Mm -hmm. and i just feel like i used to be I was always very outspoken. Mm. And so she said, you need to take that energy mm. into debate. Mm -hmm. So I'm signing up for debate club. Mm. And this is the funny thing. Mm. I ended up winning into school debate oh, wow. as like a joke. Because again, mm. when I was given the debate, yeah. I had to ask my older brother. He's mm. always been very intellectual. Mm. And I said, I've been given this topic to debate. Please mm. help me write points. Mm. And because my points, which mm. are technically his points, mm. were so good, ended up winning, but it planted a seed. He was your charge GPT. He was really... <laughs> <laughs> I think now if he hears this, he'll be like, you never gave me my commission. <laughs> but it seemed like Frog Voice had now found her mm. actual voice. Mm. Like I was like, oh, I can actually use my voice mm. and not be conscious of it mm. and use it to speak on issues. Mm. Um, mm. And so even when I moved to Nairobi mm. to boarding school, because mm. remember we lived in Mombasa, mm -hmm. I joined um, debate, debate club yeah. and joined Model United Nations. Oh wow! And so from 16, 17, mm. you're at MUN, 
mm. deliberating on global issues yeah. as a high school student. Do you remember your first time like standing in that um, in the UN diocese? Yeah, and what was, you are talking about? It was about Panama, the country which I'd never heard oh, of in my wow. life. I was just like Panama ni nini. Oh wow! But you're given a country. You're yeah. all told this is your country. You have to debate on this issue. Yeah. And there was an environmental rights issue. Mm -hmm. This is over 25 years ago. Yeah. And so in the debate club, you're trained, mm. you're told, learn about the country, mm -hmm. learn about this issue, learn mm. how to create mm. a conversation Le around yeah. it. Mm. And so going in there was intimidating because mm. you've got kids from now proper group of schools yeah. with all their kizungu mingi and you're yeah. there trying yeah. to figure out how to Navigate. express yourself. Yeah. <laughs> but it was such a learning curve. And again, it further planted all these things yeah. in me for, mm. I loved the space. I loved being among my peers who we were not really just talking about boyfriends and girlfriends and yeah. cool clothes, we were actually talking about issues. Yeah. So that was pretty amazing. Mm. Um, yeah. Very so. cool. And your, your, your teenage years. Yeah. Um, how are they? What do you recall around that time? What kind of girl were you? <laughs> I was a bit of a misfit because I was, the one thing I didn't mention was that I was quite a, what is called a tomboy. Mm -hmm. I know now we're in a space where we're trying to do away with a lot of labels, mm. but I was a tomboy. Mm. My sister, remember, was six years older. Mm -hmm. So when I'm in, Primary, she's in high school, and she, I'm in high school, she's in uni. Mm -hmm. So we didn't actually have a lot of time together because yeah. she was also in boarding. Mm. So she did four years of boarding mm -hmm. and four years of boarding again in uni. Mm. So I was stuck with my two brothers. Oh. So I was just a boy. Yeah, you are they were like, them. you'll dress like mm. us, you'll play like us, mm. you'll be roughed up like us. Mm. Mm. And so those were my teenage years. Oh, I was wow. very much, so you become a bit of a misfit because mm -hmm. you're not the cool chick. Mm. All these girls who would either be like, I don't know, pretty or popular, mm. where mm. I'd just be the one in the corner. Mm. Um, I loved, yeah, playing rough. Yeah. I think I blossomed <laughs> later in high school when I was about 17. Yeah. Is when now I started being interested in dating mm. or I was al alive to it. Mm. I could not mm. date. My mm. mother would mm. not hear of such yeah. things, but I was alive to it, mm. you know, cause now mm. you're in high school yeah. and I was in a mixed school. Yeah. You're noticing and then you're becoming noticeable. There well. you go. Mm. Which had never happened. Mm -hmm. I was just like, I don't know what's happening, mm. but I like it. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. but before then, no, my high school years were focused on just hanging out with friends. We were, in, we were also, in as much as I was a misfit, we started mm. to find mm. like-minded group mm. of friends. Yeah. Yeah. We'd enjoy the same music. Mm. We'd do sleepovers. Mm. What kind of music was? It was everything time? from um, Swahili Nation, who I loved. Oh, dear. oh my yes. God, I met them and yes. I lost my mind. <laughs> yeah. And Hakuna Matata came groupie. out. <laughs> yeah, I was such a groupie. But also Backstreet Boys mm. and, yeah. you know, Masimaira yeah. and... Um, Mariah, just what like yeah. Aaliyah. 90s were. 90s yeah, were. The early 90s music. The only yeah. thing that I now appreciate mm -hmm. like crazy, which I didn't then, mm -hmm. was was hip hop. Oh, so yeah. now I'm a big hip hop head because yeah. now I'm re listening to Tupac and all these with a very different lens. Like I've been going down a rabbit hole. But is this all because of the issues that they cover? Because yeah. they're really different. Some but of you know, them were purely just topical. Fun times. Yeah. And others were really like their story. Yeah. So I just used to wonder why do they abuse women all the time in mm. their songs? Mm. Called a hoochie and all these things. Mm. But then I realized, now you know what, it was their lived experience. Mm. But beyond that, mm. the storytelling and yeah. the, in the issues, which yeah. people like, you know, Kendrick and all do, or, mm. you know, sometimes somebody like Issa did. Mm -hmm. I'm, I didn't appreciate it then, mm. but I was just listening to R&B mm. and pop mm. and it mm. was good, good times, mm. good vibes. And watching news by the side and getting inspired by the operas. Yeah, I loved watching opera. Mm. You're I the just kind of girl, every evening you'd every evening yeah. for for years. Mm. I just mm. used to make a date with her. I just used to feel like she's an African auntie. Mm. <laughs> that I again, I loved that she looked like me, yeah. and so I could listen to her. Mm. I couldn't mm. listen to Kinariki Lake. I was just I cannot relate. Mm. This one I can relate mm. to her. So I watched a lot of mm. Oprah and mm. learned about other broader issues, yeah. whether it was things like domestic violence yeah. or um identity mm. or mm. um mm. whatever it was because yeah. she covered everything yeah she was yeah. not bound to any topic per se it was yeah anything and it everything. was anything but at the same yeah. time as i mentioned the other day on social media yeah. i also wanted to be you kind of want to be pretty and liked mm. so I'd, <laughs> face of africa was out there i'm like let me go oh, audition yeah. ah. five foot five they were just like no honey so really at what age were you at the time maybe 15 16. Oh. so between 13 and 16 was an identity thing where an identity formation identity maybe formation not even as much, yeah right? from mm. from like tomboy mm. to teen to mm. then you're rec being noticed and mm. you're noticing mm. and all of those mm. things kind of mm -hmm. built up so mm. yeah then I, I i finished um i didn't finish high school that's a lie i did didn't i wow huh? i took a gap year oh no I, I finished high school and took a gap year okay. before going to uni yeah 
Now, uh, and high school, this is uh, A levels mm. or levels? A levels, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, I don't want to go to uni immediately. I want mm. to take a gap year. That's when dad was mm. like, fine, but you you'll work. Plan. Yeah. I was like, I'll do what? He's like, mm. you'll work. You'll pay bills in this house. Oh, wow. So. Here um, you're around 16, 17. No, now I'm 17. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm now 18. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I want to find myself. He's like, you find yourself, but mm -hmm. you'll work. Mm. And I was back in Mombasa. Okay. My friend who worked at Chicken Licken at the time told me, look, I have a friend who's opening a radio station called Pulse FM. Mm. She told me, why don't you try out? I heard they're looking for presenters. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I just need a job. So sour, let mm. me go try out. Mm. And I did. Mm. And baptism by fire. The next day they said, why don't you come for the next interview? The next interview was on air. Like, by oh, the way, wow. my life has always been baptism wow. by fire. I think I'm recovering now. <laughs> everything from news, everything has just been, go on set, you're fine. I want to hear that first one, especially. <laughs> the first one. Mm. I even remember he was called Tim. Yeah. My, the programs controller. The programs controller. Mm -hmm. So the first, he was talking to me yeah. the first day. Yeah. Just like, ah, okay, come tomorrow. Mm. Let's, um, let's do another interview. And this is a new radio station. It's a new radio station. Mm. They were the sister company to Capital. Right. Let's go oh. back to high school. Okay. I was obsessed with Capital. Oh, good. I was still obsessed with Kiss. I think yeah. Kiss was out in 2000, 2001, yeah. Yeah, yeah. high school. Yeah. And it was just amazing also to have people like Caroline, yeah. an African woman yeah. on radio, strong. Radio, strong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Capital, mm -hmm. I think because of growing up the way I did, mm -hmm. it had a very dynamic group of people, but also types of music. Mm. So I was kind of hooked on Rick Dees. Oh, Rick Dees, Saturday 10 Saturday, to 1. Saturday 10, 10 to 1, 10 yeah. to 2. Yeah. And because my last year in high school was hard. Mm -hmm. Why? I don't know. The last year of high school was really, really hard for me. I think I felt like... O levels was everybody got along, mm. and then now groups formed, and then there was the mean girls click. They were mean. Mm. Aki, we were all terrorized By and them. traumatized. Yeah, they were just. I think there was just this thing where it happens a lot in high school, mm. maybe in high schools as of I don't know, mm. but where there's division of groups. Yeah, and so mm. I became very isolated. Mm. I just kind of used to, so music was my escape, mm. and I was a music student, mm. so mm. I was emo. I'd mm. be like, let me go into my feelings <laughs> yeah. in the music room. <laughs> so the music teachers and music students mm. became my Your, comfort zone and yeah. my solace. Mm. Mm. And so Rick D's, because yeah. I was in boarding school, mm. I would just always look for a radio. I'd beg for one. A radio or a Walkman? <laughs> it, a ra Walkman was now, if you're very lucky, and if I'm there's sure somebody. I'm sure some people don't know what <laughs> <laughs> Dear children, you will never know <laughs> the joys of a Walkman. Yeah. But yeah, and I would just listen to Rick Dees and I'd have this musical journey. Yeah. Literally, I just wouldn't do anything else other than read, study while listening. Yeah. So I remember saying, man, wouldn't it be so nice to work at Capital? Oh, that's really nice. Who yeah. else are on Capital other than, than Rick Dees? Patricia Mira. Oh. And funny enough, she was and a family voice, friend. Her voice. Well. That's the other thing. I'd be yeah. like somebody who has a deep exactly. voice like me. Yeah. Oh my God. Where, oh, I, I'm, I'm not sure where Patricia went, but yeah, yeah she went to I, M yes. I'm having fun listening to this because I was such a fan of Capital as well. Really? A Yay! Lot we years. need to throw a Capital <laughs> fans party. They did their twentieth <laughs> year, and I was like, you have to hook me up. Yeah, yeah somehow. Now, now. Yeah, so yes, Patricia so was yeah. amazing. Um, mm. Eve D'Souza, who's also oh, yeah. like a family yeah, friend, and we're in Mombasa together. So yeah, like I really listened to Capital and I used mm. to say I mm. want to be on Capital. And it's funny because Patricia was a family friend yeah. through one of the families that we were very close to in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. And I asked her once, I said, I really want to be on radio. And she mm. just said, finish school Definitely. and then try. Mm. Never left. Those seeds you plant in children, yeah. I was just like, hey, I yeah. will come for you. Mm. So now when I took my gap year, mm -hmm. I'd forgotten. Mm. So when this person said radio, mm -hmm. then Pulse FM were the sister station to Capital. To Capital. Mm -hmm. So the second, was it Swahili or just? It wasn't. It, oh, well, some shows were in Swahili, mm -hmm. some were English, some mm -hmm. were a mix. Mm -hmm. So when he told me the second day, come and come for another interview, mm -hmm. he takes me to the studio, tells me to sit down, puts on headphones and raises the houses. Oh, wow. Then he's just like, just say anything. So I did. I was just like, hi, everyone. And he's just telling me, hey, I'm talking. Welcome. <laughs> I'm Janet. No training. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> And then I finished and he's like, cool, you have the job. Start tomorrow. I'm like, wait, see, at least train me. He's just like, no, you're fine. What, what, what show was that? Wow. I don't remember, right, but it I was also the, the 10 a.m. Oh, the 10 a.m. So after breakfast, mid-morning. Yeah, mid-morning. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because 
it was me followed by, I remember very distinctly, a mm -hmm. presenter called Shiro. Mm -hmm. And the two of us, mm. interestingly enough, our shows were starting to do well. Mm. I feel like I don't remember much. Yeah. I do remember that there was, we were now starting to be frustrated yeah. by like some of the other people. It was weird. Yeah. This mean girl, Maneno, yeah, just never yeah. really it, leaves. It followed you up It after. followed, yeah, yeah. But I... I kept saying I need to get to capital mm. and this is my window. Mm -hmm. So every time so you when, hung on in there. Yeah, and mm. there was a button you could press yeah. in studio yeah. and you could listen to what's playing on Capital. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But not on air. Mm. So whenever I was having a quiet moment, mm -hmm. I'd just like daydream and listen to mm. Capital. Mm. Then I started I started applying. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is I mm. once told my mom, I'm like, could you record me? Mm -hmm when you're home mm. could you record one of my shows i want to use oh. that as a tape mm. to audition mm. to be a presenter what did, did impulse have the um mm. a way to record that on tape they didn't remember they were being funny oh yeah there was like a weird okay. thing and a uh, turnover yeah, yeah. people's jobs were not secure mm. so it motivated me even okay. more so i told All her right. just record me mm -hmm. and i showed her just press these two you know mm. how to record mm. yeah on cassettes yeah oh my hey, god guys the we do a tutorial for you on cassettes <laughs> and Walkman. <laughs> where you didn't have pen and <laughs> yeah so she recorded a show mm -hmm. and i'm like keep the tape mm. so one i used to call capital mm -hmm. i'm not kidding every day to win uh, no to just president. find out if they have an opening oh, every wow. day every day in the evening yeah i'd call i remember the receptionist was called jacqueline yeah i don't know if she's still around or alive i'm yeah. not sure but mm -hmm. she was so sweet mm -hmm. she'd be like janet it's you again so we don't really have anything right now but mm -hmm. i promise when we do the next day she'd be like it's you again one day she patched me through to studio it was phil matthews oh janet listen i know you're calling every day oh wow we've heard you We'll call you if there's anything. I'm like, okay. But he, they were not mean about it. What happens to that grit that we yeah. have as young people at that time? You're like, there's nothing that's going to stop me. This is what I want, I want. That's and then really life good, happens later. That's a really like, good huh, question. I'm constantly afraid of trying. I know. Trying. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think I've lost it. You've not lost Maybe it. You're a go-getter that I'm way. a go-getter, but mm. also I realize that rejection is just a lesson. Or and rejection it's part is, of like... Yeah, and you yeah. can pivot. Oh, good. Job. Again, I did a video mm. the other day where I said, Okay, face of Africa, guys laughed at me because mm. I wanted to model, mm. but I just just decided then just pivot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Move so, from that to whatever else. To whatever else. But you're right. When mm. you're younger, the grit yeah. is much stronger. Yeah. Because calling every day. I, I don't know. Also, I don't know if I was okay because who does that? <laughs> That's really good though. Yeah. Yeah. Until at, so at, did you, then I know in your story, there's capital. There's well. capital. <laughs> you're like, fill the gap. <laughs> <laughs> so once... I, <clears throat> when I was in Nairobi, because we'd go once in a while for weddings mm. and to see cousins mm. during the holiday. Mm -hmm. And so I dropped off the tape. Remember there was the tape. So I told Jacqueline, hi, it's me. She even yeah. hugged me. She's like, oh my God, you've been calling us all the time. Mm. I'm going to make sure your tape gets to fill. Yeah. And God bless her. She kept it and she gave it. And months later, again, I happened to be in Nairobi. Mm. This time I remember it was a cousin's wedding mm -hmm. and I was with my mom and mm. my sister. They were in the front and I was at mm -hmm. the back and I get a call. Mm. I was 18, so yes, there were cell phones. Wow, Janet. <laughs> I had a cell phone. Mm. A surgeon? Yes. With, with like a thing <laughs> like at the top? <laughs> and I get a call, and I just remember it said, Hi, Janet, this is Phil Matthews. And I gasped. Mm -hmm. So my mom and sister, and I was just like, Matthews. And he said, Look, we have an opening. Are you in Nairobi? I'm like, Actually, I'm in Nairobi. Oh, my God. So he said, Can you Stars come tomorrow? I know. <laughs> so I said, I'll be there. So I went and looked for an outfit, and I went again. Notice the baptism mm -hmm. by fire mm -hmm. trend. Mm -hmm. So he said, there's a lady, she's leaving in two weeks. So you mm -hmm. have two weeks to figure out how you'll be on air. Mm -hmm. Cool. What, what show was that? 10 a.m. again. Interesting. Italia? Masiera? Not, no, by then, mm -hmm. oh my God, this was, oh, Maxi, this was like way back. Italia, I think, came in to do the came afternoon. The afternoon, but... The, there's a time she really did rock, though. Yeah, like she did rock. So one. I think actually, yeah, we were in the same... Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember, because I remember it was Farid in the morning. Yeah. Um, and then now the lady who was there, yeah. who was going to the US, mm -hmm. I forget her name. I think she mm -hmm. was called Priya. Mm -hmm. And then there was um, Italia mm -hmm. and then Drive with Phil and then Hits Not Homework with oh, Eve. That's, that's a while back. That was a while because back. That's 20 years ago. still on Drive. It's exactly. not Marcus and Leo exactly. and the rest. That, 20 years ago. Oh yeah, okay. That was way back that's when. That's media as we knew it. I know. When radio really rocked. When radio, <laughs> when radio rock. no kidding. Yeah. Mm. So he said she's leaving and... We just need to test your voice and see whether this is something you can actually do. Mm, mm. Your, your tape sounded decent, mm. so let's see. So the way that works is you do voiceovers for yeah. two days. Yeah. I don't even think it's supposed to be two days. I mm. think it's supposed to be a week, but they were moving me quickly. Mm. Then they put you on weather. Mm -hmm. You're actually live on air with mm. a presenter. And traffic. So And traffic, mm. yes. Mm. So I think I did traffic with Sean Cardavillis mm -hmm. when he was doing oh. drive. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're sitting mm -hmm. in for Phil mm -hmm. and weather with Farid. Mm. 
And then after a week, they threw me on late night with Oyunga Pala. Oh my God. My whole 19 year old self. Oh my God. And Oyunga at that time, remember, he yeah. was the guy he for, was. I have no filter. Yeah. I speak my oh mind. Oh my God. And my <laughs> young self, I'm like, hi, I'm Janet. And he looked so irritated because he's like, why have I been given this child? Yeah. But somehow, and it's late night. That's it's that's eleven, like so I'm almost 11, like, yeah. I'm like, this is way past my bedtime. Yeah. But you're, <laughs> you're happy. Like, but I was also nervous because he was really giving me. I can say this now because we're friends. Yeah, he was really giving me attitude because literally oh. he was just like, this is a child. Yeah. And late night was controversial topics it like was. sex yeah. and. Yeah. Funny enough, mm. maybe it's that great. Mm -hmm. I held my own mm. till afterwards. He's just like, damn, like, he was. He was like, you mm. were actually able to host a conversation I, with me. And you're actually the host. You're the we one co -hosting. driving the, the show, right? Yeah. So what mm. he does is he brings you in once in a while mm -hmm. to do a link with him. Okay. And he'll ask you, what do you think about this? All right. I don't know. Mm. I think the Holy Spirit was with me because mm -hmm. I don't know how I ended up having a conversation with Oyunga on yeah. late night. Yeah. And so, then the next day, mm -hmm. they were like, I think you're ready. I'm like, no, I'm not. They're like, you're ready for a morning. I'm like, I'm not. What training have I done? They're like, oh, everything you've been doing is training. You guys are jokers. They put me on. The morning show the next day. Morning, like mm, 10 breakfast. Oh, 10 a.m. Yeah, morning. after Farid. And here you have to drive the desk yourself. For four hours, 10 to 2. You're feeling comfortable? Now, see, they'd been showing me. Yeah. But I was still like, I'm not ready. They're like, you're fine. Those things can 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 intimidate you. So sometimes they'd have a producer yeah. come in just to, like, to make sure I'm okay. Yeah. yeah. So I did that for a year, just less than a year. How was that? It was amazing. I First of imagine. all, I'm like, this is it's my It's capital, dream this is your dream. It has come when you're barely 20. When you're barely trying. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't trying, I was 19. Yeah. And it was also cool being trained by people like Farid and Phil. Yeah, um, the best in the market. Yeah, they've I mean, trained really. a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've yeah. trained a lot of people. Yeah. So it was... Phil Matthews is really... Yeah. Everyone who is anyone, Maina Kageni, Caroline Motuka, anyone Julie who is, Gishuru, Julie Gishuru yeah. has, been, has walked through the hands of Phil Matthews. Of oh, Phil Matthews, you mm. mean, I mean, the list is endless. Mm. So, and maybe that explains why we've all kind of stayed in the space. Exactly. In one way or Blossomed another. Blossomed and continued being. Yeah. What, what, was, what, what was the magic? What was the magic bullet for him? Why, why are his products so good? <laughs> products. Products. <laughs> yeah, but products. Like, yeah. For one, hey, character development. Yeah. Yeah. He'd walk in. If you're messing around, they'd be like, what was that? You're in the middle. You're about to do a link. So you have to somehow gather the courage and wipe away your tears before you go back on air. Mm. So I think part of it was mm. learning how to pivot and get back into your yeah. centering. Yeah. Second was just the discipline of mm. don't interrupt your guests when mm. you're interviewing them. Mm. Don't make sure that when a song is fading out, you can, you can talk. Speaking. There you go. Yeah. You, you've done radio. No, I've done radio. I, I, I'm loving this conversation. Because I'm like, it's, wait, it's, it's this <laughs> guy. <laughs> I'm like, it's why do you know? my whole journey, but it's so awesome. <laughs> you know, like that part of, you know, there's like a line that shows that this is the end of yes. music. So start talking now. Start so talking. that, you know, by the time it's silent, you can. You can just continue. Yeah. So, and I think that kind of thing, even how to project, how mm. to, how to pace, yeah. how to. Yeah. So I think the magic was in the discipline of mm. the craft, mm. but also the character. Because mm. nobody would kind of stroke your ego, mm. even though I'm sure we mm. all have our own ego issues. Yeah. But check your ego at the door when you're yeah. in front of that mic. It's yep. really not, it's mm. about you, but it's also not about you. Mm. So mm. I think that's what it is. And he mm. was very consistent mm. across the board. Mm. So really? maybe that was, mm. that's a very good thing would be to ask all of us what was the magic. That's, yeah. A, yeah. that's a really because good question. all of you have stuck, yeah. you know, or even if you're not directly doing media, like you yeah. know, most of you are not right now, yeah. but it's, you're still legendary. You know, yeah, or doing an extension legends. of media like yeah, moderating, exactly. emceeing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which so. is all media. Yeah. Which is all media. All that, all that training. Yes. And most of the people I'm sure didn't even have, at least the people mm. I know who's who passed through is and didn't even have that media background as a no, like as a background. Not really. Yeah. Like I only now after that is when I joined uni to do mass communication. Mm -hmm. But before then, I was not a student. Yeah. On like a gap year, finding yeah, myself. Yeah. Wow, Janet. How was your dad taking this? He at now the time? he was happy. You have a yeah, job. Yeah. Oh my God. He was just like yes. He was very happy. Yeah. He just wanted to make sure, like, number one, you know, things are not handed to you. Yeah. You work for them. Mm. So he, I ended up living with my aunt. Because remember, mm -hmm. I live in Mombasa. So yeah. I moved in with my aunt. So I was independent very early, although my aunt was strict. Mm. But still, <laughs> you know? she was just like, in this house, yeah. it is the Holy Spirit in us. <laughs> <laughs> but it was still, mm. I'm waking up every day to take the bus, yeah. to get to Kencom, to yeah. cross the road, to get to, uh, you know, to Long uh, Lonro House. house. Yeah. So you just, I don't know, I was very mm. independent very early. You finish mm. your 
when I'd finished the show, I'd end up hanging out with the producer. Sometimes we'd mm. go to like a pub or a restaurant mm. till late. Mm. I'd still catch the mm. bus, go back yeah. to my aunt's house. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Mm. I loved it. I was, I love it. You are feeling that uh, yeah, I, was, this is, I was on a high. I'm like, yeah. this is life. Yeah. This is what life should be. But this newfound freedom, what yeah. is it doing to you though? Like, are you, yeah. so are you beginning to manifest uh, drastically as a late bloomer teenage girl? You know, funny enough, and this is wild. I don't know, I keep saying, when you hear me say the Holy Spirit, it's not sarcastic. Because <laughs> I don't know how I didn't lose my way. Yeah. Maybe just, th there's, a, there's a general strictness that I was brought up with. Even though mm. there was a liberal, mm. there was also a strictness where you couldn't really veer too much. But I had every opportunity to do anything crazy under the sun. Be anything. Because one, you're not living at home. And then you're a media girl. Media girl had a brand, uh, like yeah. a stereotype. Stereotype, you know, yeah. You are, you, you, yeah. Media girls have had a brand, especially young media girls. Especially young media <laughs> girls. Yeah. And somehow, I just centered myself. Mm. I'd still have fun. I still mm. went to parties. Yeah. Yeah. But I never did anything extreme. That would feel wild. Or, yeah. yeah. So I mm. died. Holy mm. Spirit. It can only be. Um, <laughs> And then I went to uni because yeah. I'd done my gap year. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to go, but I think it was the time capital was changing ownership. Yeah. And there was oh, a lot right. of there was a lot of tension. Yeah. And I just said, okay, I'll just I'll just hang up my cape. I mm. would have stayed otherwise mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. maybe figured out how to balance it with school. Mm -hmm. But then I ended up going to uni, mm -hmm. first in South Africa, then Malaysia. Mm -hmm. you, you'd be surprised to know mm -hmm. that in countries like Malaysia, it was cheaper to be in uni than in Kenya. Oh wow. So there was an exodus. Okay. It's a funny, mm -hmm. it depending, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but if you wanted to go to, let's say, private union or whatever, yeah. if you compared, it was either almost the same. It, or more more than it would be at USIU, yeah. or Strath, or Daystar. So there was suddenly an exodus, because also people were in that space of, mm -hmm. let's expose our yeah. children. Yeah. So it wasn't to do with, because I need, I need people to understand, it's not that there was money flowing. Yeah. My folks worked so hard and mm. they didn't want us to feel like mm. you can just wake up and yeah. go to uni in yeah. any country. Yeah. Everything was always very calculated. But even if done it was, it's okay. <laughs> also. It's not your choice Aww. because it's the parents who've done that. That's you true. know, they have but, chosen a path yeah. and you won't refuse if they're educating you. It's, I guess it's, so. Yeah. But they would remind us. They'd yeah. be like, Which you dare good. fail. Yeah. You oh, yeah. come back here yeah, to yeah, go yeah. farming yeah. where you need to be. <laughs> yeah. So that was an awesome experience. I did my like my first year in, in SA in mm -hmm. Cape Town, mm -hmm. which what was... It was like a foundation course. Mm -hmm. It was like year one. Mm. I don't know how else to put it. Right. Um, Cape Town was interesting. Mm -hmm. It was very. Was it was your coastal. first country to to live? Yeah. To, to to live to. Yes. Oh, so from coast to coast. From like, coast I to mean, coast. From, there yeah. we go. From coast to Cape Town. Yeah. And that's what it was nice. I mean, mm. it was strict because you're still technically students. Mm. But uh, Cape Town was dope. It was just very yeah. Beach town. You I, did everything. Table Mountain. Stuff. Yeah, I did a little bit of Table Mountain, yeah. um, Camps Bay, which mm. was like, whoa, mm -hmm. okay then, mm. okay, Hollywood. But we would just smell it. Or you yeah. go there as a group yeah. and everybody shares a meal because you can't afford it. Cape Town, though, is also known for a crime. lot of crime yeah. and um, r racism. Yeah. Yeah, like bad racism. I think, I think places like Pretoria mm -hmm. and KwaZulu-Natal are worse. Mm -hmm. Cape Town was... We, it was, we used to see a very big diaspora community. Yeah. So you didn't really feel it. The scary mm. thing was the crime mm -hmm. because you'd just be warned mm. about going into certain taxis, which mm. are matatus basically, because mm. that was just the mode of mm. transport and mm. walking in certain streets at certain times. Mm. But there was a bit of being sheltered because if you're a student community, mm -hmm. you alert each other. So you mm -hmm. don't go venturing yeah. out. But yeah, you were mm -hmm. told, mm -hmm. don't be walking around here at night. Yeah. Yeah. But it was nice. Generally, Cape Town was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Malaysia was also, mm -hmm. I loved Malaysia. Yeah. I loved it. I made a group of friends. We were like more mini UN. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Botswana, mm -hmm. Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. um, Indonesia, mm -hmm. India. Mm -hmm. uh, we were like a core group. Yeah, exposing each other. Exposing each, each other, yeah. And, and my friend from... Botswana Buipelo, I need to call her, mm -hmm. loved her. Mm -hmm. So it was nice because we were two sisters from Africa, so we were like this. There was also a lot of Kenyans. One mm -hmm. of my best friends also happened to be there. I loved Malaysia. Mm -hmm. I loved the food. I liked the... They were racist though. <laughs> hey, yeah. let's talk about racism. That's you enter a, a mall and everyone stops what they're doing. Especially a mall, the Malays, because Malaysia has three big groups. Mm -hmm. They have the Indian population, mm -hmm. the Chinese population, mm -hmm. and the Malays. Mm -hmm. The Malays are not... And this is, remember, many years ago. Mm -hmm. So I hope I'm not out of, mm -hmm. you know, not tone deaf. Mm -hmm. But they were really not exposed. Mm -hmm. So you'd enter a Mandla mall and everyone stops what they're doing. Because mm -hmm. it was a predominantly Malay mall. No, but they literally stop what they're doing. 
they look out of shops they stand up from restaurants to check you out, to check you out. and then remember we're like a mini un mm -hmm. and my friend from new delhi would be like what are you looking at <laughs> you know kind of thing mm. but it's okay mm. it's just knowing mm. that oh you'd go out yeah my clubbing days were hardcore in my oh, oh yeah <laughs> i think i got it out of my system by the time i came back to kenya <laughs> how long was the period like two, three years three years what uh, what were you doing by the way what was there oh mass communication mm, okay which i wasn't sure i'd do but after capital and all yeah. i'm like you know what let me pursue mass yeah, comms with mm. a with a major in journalism mm -hmm. and a minor in pr mm -hmm. which i never really used but mm. maybe social media became mm. the new mm. pr mm. Uh, yeah but i had fun mm. had a lot mm. of fun you know made a lot of great friends learned a lot about cultures mm. um didn't really date much mm. i think i was just i was just enjoying again living mm. in a new country and mm. trying out new things mm. and meeting new people mm. i so i really loved it yeah. i really really loved it and you'd come back every i'd come back holiday. once a year mm. um and yeah like i said a lot of people's experiences were not necessarily great so mm. a lot of people went into depression because it's such a different culture yeah. yeah but somehow my mind maybe because of mombasa mm -hmm. and being around different cultures yeah. Yeah. i just adapted mm. so mm. i genuinely enjoyed it mm. and when i finished i I was starting to get the bug for working again. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I just want to go work. Mm. Here now you're in your early 20s. Now I'm in my, yeah, I'm like 22, 23, mm -hmm. 22 actually. Mm -hmm. 22, 23. Mm -hmm. Came back to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. What does dad say again? Mm -hmm. You must you find work. work, my mm -hmm. friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, but I want to, he's like, no, no, now you're at the age where you can actually yeah. legit find work. And his words were very powerful to me. He said, I want you to tarmac, like tarmac until your heels are worn. Mm -hmm. Those were his exact words. Mm -hmm. He said, just, like tafuta job mm. don't sit there waiting for mm -mm. Mm. look for work. and he he could if he had wanted he could like have hooked you up somewhere yeah or where mm. he's worked he's, yeah. there's a company he worked and built for many many years mm. he could have but he's yeah. just like you will tarmac mm. i'm like okay dad i'll mm. tarmac even mm. mom was like what mm. he said and your siblings as well my siblings by that time my older sister was working my older brother i think was he in the country because he, he studied, he got a scholarship to study outside the country. Mm -hmm. And my twin was still pursuing education mm -hmm. in uni, okay. further education. Right. Mm -hmm. Me, I was the one who's like, I have an itch to go back to work. <laughs> He's like, you could have chosen to finish your, like, you know, to further, masters, nee, nee, nee. but you've chosen yeah. to be here, so yeah. you will work. Yeah. And so I remembered Capital. Mm -hmm. So I went and asked, had a coffee with Eve. Mm -hmm. Then Eve was like, I things are think right now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of changes happening. Mm -hmm. Why don't you consider TV? Mm -hmm. And you know, I laughed. Mm -hmm. I'm like, but Eve, I'm not for TV. She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, but I'm not. Me, I know radio. Mm. She's like, you know, I and them is just there. Yeah. So what I think I would do if I were you, just, just go over. across yeah. and ask them. And you, you did? That's exactly what I did. Oh, wow. I didn't know anyone. Yeah. I had nothing. I don't even think I had a CV. Yeah. But yeah. this is an interesting thing I had. Yeah. While I was in uni, because I was doing mass and a lot of my friends were focusing on film, mm -hmm. they would we would ask each other to be in each other's class projects. Oh, so like demos. Demos. So I had yeah. a demo. Mm. A Kenyan guy called James was like, by the way, here's a demo mm. for you acting in my film, but also there was a role where I was pretending to be a reporter. Yeah. It's just weird how life works. Yeah. So that's all I had. Oh man. So So you use that it, yeah. for for acting. I used that. So I went I went to I and mm -hmm. I said, Hi, excuse <clears throat> me. KTN now. KTN. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for a job. But I remember I followed up by saying, even if I'm going to start by serving tea. Oh. And I think that's what got them. Because I'm like, wh wherever I need to start, I'll start from, I'll start somewhere and build yeah. up. Yeah. And they told me later, that's the only reason we gave you time. Who was that? The two receptionists. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because you know, you come in, you're like, hi, I'm looking for a job. They didn't even flinch. They're like, who are you? Who are you here to say? Um, see, I'm like, I'm not here to see anyone. They were like, what do you mean? I said, okay, so I'm Janet. I don't know anyone. I'm looking for a job. Can I serve tea? They looked mm. at each other. They looked at me. They were like, just sit down there, now in the waiting area. Mm. So they were calling a producer mm. who had been looking for a host. Because mm. mm. now they figured mm. she probably wants to be on TV. Mm. So they called me back and said, you said you're Janet. Mm. Um, okay, do you have anything with you? Mm. So I said, I don't have it with me. Mm. It's at home. So they said, go get what you have. So mm. I took a mat, went back mm. to get the demo oh, wow. to bring it. Mm. And they said, okay, this is like a recording. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll give it to There's somebody called Gabby. He's been looking for a travel mm -hmm. show presenter. Mm -hmm. And then I remember thinking, I'm not even looking for a but cool. Mm -hmm. I'm not, whatever you mm -hmm. have, mm -hmm. I'll take. Mm -hmm. So they gave it to Gabby. Gabby called me that evening. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And he said, can you come for a screen test? I was like, I don't even know what's happening. Mm -hmm. So I went the next day. Mm -hmm. No, the next day he, to, to meet me. He mm -hmm. wanted to meet me and mm -hmm. get to know me yeah. and say, we're doing interviews for a travel show. We, mm -hmm. were we had shortlisted two. Mm -hmm. We can shortlist you as the third person, but mm -hmm. we need the three of you to go to 
Uhuru Park mm -hmm. and pretend you're doing a piece to camera mm -hmm. before we decide who we'll pick as the host. Mm -hmm. So you remember no training, as usual, yeah. baptism yeah. by fire. So I told him, you know, I don't have training. He's like, you relax. Nobody here is trained. We got you. We got you. Mm -hmm. So he said, tomorrow when you come, make sure you wear earth tones. So mm -hmm. wear like a brown t-shirt, jeans, mm -hmm. Makeup, I'm like, I don't wear makeup. Mm. He's like, try and find a way to wear a little bit of makeup. Mm. <laughs> so I don't even remember what I did. <laughs> I think I just put eyeliner. Mm. And we went to this office and then the three of us were driven to Uhuru Park. Mm -hmm. And one by one, mm. people were doing a screen test. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, while they were doing it, I was, I was making friends with the crew. Mm. I'm just like, hey, tell me about this show. What mm. happens? Mm. And that's part of what landed me the job. Mm. They were like, she's the only one who spoke to us. Oh. Let me tell you this life. Guys, wow. guys, let me tell you. <laughs> just, I don't know, man. Yeah. It's, mm. it's weird how mm. that's not what I was looking mm. for, mm. but mm. it ended up. So I did the screen test. Mm. Then he told me there's no guarantee that you'll get this job. Mm. We can't promise. Mm -hmm. So I told him, but you realize I'll have to go back to Mombasa mm. and wait. He's like, that's mm. all I can tell you to do. Mm. So I went back, it was the longest week of my life because he said, we need a week to deliberate. The mm. board has to see the tapes. Mm. Mm. The board has to decide. Mm. Ultimately, it's not me. Mm. All this time, I'd not told my parents. Mm -hmm. I just said, can I just stay home for two weeks as mm. I continue my mm -hmm. job search? Mm. So I went to Mombasa. Mm. But five days later, I got the call that changed my life. From from from, from, from Gabi. He's mm. just like, I kind of fought for you because they were saying you're too young, you're too thin. I was oh. a very thin child. Mm. I'm like, that's a bit discriminatory, mm -hmm. but okay. Mm. Um, but ultimately... <laughs> you kind of maybe the tomboyish mm. you were able to mm. um oh look at that yeah yeah i was on the road a week later no training who are the other two girls <laughs> i don't remember their names okay they, so i thought there are people who probably also continue no to, no no i don't remember their names okay. they didn't continue right. okay i don't remember who they were but yeah there was and i was taking over from the late kanini because she used to host uh, out and about yes and then she yes. moved to nation to be a news anchor yes. so he was looking for a presenter okay all right um and mm. so yeah i ended mm. up doing out and about and had How never was, done and that's now exposing you to every place that was literally the dream job hey, oh, tell me about ever it. yeah oh my god <laughs> I'm now just having memories. <laughs> it was nice, but it was also a bit tough because I was always on the road with, first of all, I was always with men on yeah. the road. Oh yeah. But the, the crew were amazing. Mm. The best people mm. were always the guys behind the camera, mm. guys who were driving. Honestly. They ended up being mm. my allies because mm. unfortunately, the late producer had mm. a very serious um, um, mental disorder. Mm. So it was, bi but severe bipolar. Mm. And we didn't know because uh, sometimes he'd project on me and I'd be like, have I done something? Mm. And it was, it was the crew who tell me, by the way, it's not you. Uh, you just focus on getting good at your job. Yeah, yeah. So they really helped so, me. So at other times he's very good. He's so you're super confused. happy and he was mm. very talented. Mm. He was so talented. Mm. Um, but it was tough because mm. you're in a new place. Okay, it was dope because it's always a new mm. county and yeah. hotel. Yeah. But you never know who you'll wake mm, up to. Mm. And sometimes he'd just be hard on you for like hours on end. Mm. And I'm what, 22, 23? Mm. I don't know anyone, but mm. they were the lifesavers. Mm. They'd mm. be like, it's not you, sis. Come. Mm. They good Come. To show, yeah? mm. You relax. Yeah. It's not. And they helped me. They even taught me how to do piece to camera. Mm. Like um, yes. um, Mutahi, I remember, was one of the older cameramen. Yeah. And when I was told, stand there and talk about what's around you, and I've never in my life done a piece to camera. So I'd be like, help me. He's like, okay, what do you see around you? It was Lake Nakuru National Park. Mm. I was like, um, I see flamingos. Okay, good, what else? Oh, I see a rhino. He's like, just tell me what you see. Keep Turn to the camera and yeah. describe. And mm. that was how I, that's how I learned my yeah. first piece to camera. Which is which is hard. I think it's the most scary thing because so you're hard. like, I need to prep. Um, I, don't, I don't have notes, but it yeah. has to be improv. Yeah, it's improv. Yeah. And I don't know if I'm saying the right thing. Yeah. So I'd say, Oh, around me, I can see flamingos. I can also see a rhino. Lake Nakuru National Park is such a beautiful place. You should all cut some, whatever, something yeah, like that. Yeah. And then he was just like, that's how you do a PTC. Oh the next God. time you go somewhere, mm. talk about what's happening around you, yeah. walk around a little bit. Yeah. That's literally, that was my media training, yeah. was on the job training. Which is beautiful. I guess so. Where else would have that been? Yeah. I, mean, I mean, you've already had your, was it like undergrad in Mascom, but yeah. this is as real as it gets. And then it's daily. So and you're refining your skills. You're refining. Mm. And then um, scripting. Mm. I wasn't supposed to script, ah. but I found myself <laughs> scripting mm. and doing the links for the show. Mm. So it was six months of, yeah. All of this and out and about. Out and about. Oh you my god. You remember gosh. that very well, eh? I do. Who which took was after you? 
Tim Juru, no? Tim Juru was doing art scene. Oh, yeah. And I think Grace yeah. took after him. Yeah. Whoever took after me, I don't even think it continued. Yeah. Yeah. And I, the only reason it ended was because it was sponsored. And you know how uh, sponsorship yeah, has ended. Yeah. However, as it was nearing its end, mm -hmm. Newsroom had started looking for me. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, how do you want me to be an anchor? These people like Beatrice Marshall coming to you and saying, oh so first of all, she comes to my desk and I'm like, the Beatrice Marshall? Yeah. She's like, hi, Janet. I'm like, hi. <laughs> Um, you know, you should consider being in the newsroom. I'd be like, look at us. How different do we look? Like you're refined. I'm just me. Yeah. And she's like, you know, sometimes it's not about that. Mm. So I was fighting it. Then Joroge Maura. Oh, oh my goodness. Couldn't even breathe. He's just like, you know, I think you should consider. So I started getting a lot of you should consider, you should mm. consider. Mm. And then this job ended. Mm -hmm. Went back to Mom Mombasa is always my default for mm. find yourself. Yeah. And dad, as usual, is like, yeah. a job. <laughs> yeah. Then he's like, I'm sorry, you've been asked for a job and you're deliberating. Because I'm like, no, they're asking me to do the news, but I'm 23. So I was very insecure because mm. I said, I remember saying, what am I going to tell Kenyans? Like, what am I telling them on the news mm. at 23? Mm. Like, how believable. How believable, yeah. It's a major breaking story. So I was something. very nervous. And I'm like, yeah. it's Beatrice and Joroge. Yeah. They're supposed Actually, to be on the news. that was the pair. That was the pair. Oh, my God. That's a legend pair. Legendary. Mm. Lillian had already started doing, like, Weekend Prime. On, oh, yeah. And, and Michael Year. Mm. So, yeah, but fine. There were some other younger people. But, but still, but, I was just like, yeah. I'm a travel show presenter. I run around in the mud. <laughs> I do Rhino Charge. And which, I do... Which you love. Which I love. So yeah. happy. I'm like, put me somewhere where I'm supposed to be climbing rocks. Yeah. And I'm happy. Yeah. And I'll just turn to the camera and say something. So very much active. Yeah. I just didn't feel like I would be believable as an anchor. So that's it. Go back. Well, I was in Mombasa still mm -hmm. trying to figure it out and they'd gone quiet. Mm -hmm. Farida Karone and Linus had just come back to KT and it was a very big story. Mm. So while I'm in Mombasa, specifically in Old Town, mm -hmm. looking for lessos, because mm. I love lessos, mm. I'm obsessed with them. Mm -hmm. I was with my mom and her friend. Mm. So I was just finding myself. Mm -hmm. I get a call. It's like, hi, is this Janet? This is Farida. Again, I almost die because I'm oh like... Oh my God, the Farida. She had left... She'd Nation. left and she'd left and Nation, team. yeah. Come back to KTN, mm -hmm. big story. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm building my news team mm -hmm. and I need you to come and do a voice test for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Then I was quiet. She's like, Are you still there? I'm like, Yeah, yeah, I'm here. She's like, I need you here in a week. So that's when folks were like, Is it a job opportunity? We'll put you in a bus, go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Went back again. Mm -hmm. I'd stay with my, I think at that time, my sister and brother had an, my, I think he was back. I'm mm -hmm. trying to remember. So there was an, a small, like, mm -hmm. one or two bedroom apartment. Mm -hmm. And I went and did a screen test. Mm -hmm. I did two screen tests. Mm -hmm. One was viewed by Farida. The other one was viewed by Njoroge. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, you seem okay. We'll put you on late night news tomorrow. Are you seeing this trend in my late life? Late night is like 11. 11. That's All where right. you can mess yeah. up a bit because yeah. it's pre-recorded. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. So, this is not emotions, I promise. <laughs> By the way, I need to learn to be emotional. <laughs> I am practicing vulnerability. <laughs> this too year, soon. I need to be too like, soon. you know, I like, see, I just... Too soon. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I was on late night news three days later. Yeah. I had to find a suit. I had to be put for makeup, oh, all these God. weird things. Yeah. And I did late night news yeah. for three, oh, for three yeah. nights. Yeah. And they were like, you're good. No, I did it for one week. Yeah. And then they said... And you're, so you're pre-recording like before the main news? Yeah, no, so, so prime After. time has ended. Yeah. So now you, you pre-record okay. at around 10 and it goes out at 11. At 11. So yeah. it's pre-recorded so they can make edits. some edits. Yeah. I did it for about a week. Mm. I think it was two weeks. Mm -hmm. No, it was one week. One mm -hmm. week of late night. Then mm -hmm. they said, you're ready for lunchtime. I was like, what is... Oh, my God. Anyway, so that's how it started. Mm -hmm. So I did lunchtime. Mm -hmm. Then I did weekend prime. Mm -hmm. So now you're, you know, kind of rising through the ranks mm -hmm. as an anchor. Now I'm, an, now I'm a news anchor, mm -hmm. which sometimes I just found so surreal. Mm -hmm. And then at the time mm -hmm. was this new crop of anchors. Yeah. Esther Arunga, mm -hmm. Janet, Lillian mm -hmm. was now on. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it was great being part of this kind that's of new it. young crop. Yeah that made news young mm, mm, because before mm, then yeah, yeah. it wasn't necessarily yeah. so that was amazing to be mm, a part of mm, where mm, now mm. you're even getting younger people mm. interested in the news mm. and you're, you're still young so you're kind of enjoying life yeah. and pulse have just come out so you're in pulse yeah <laughs> but now you are a lot more even more than you were on that um not at scene on mm, um, out, out and about, about. yeah so a lot more in the public eye so now there was a bit of publicity coming yeah. as well mm -hmm. um and then sunrise live mm -hmm. established I think who I really became as an anchor. But let me go back to, this is 2007, yeah. by the way. Oof. So 
you've done the travel show till mm -hmm. july mm -hmm. then i start doing news mm -hmm. when we go into one of our worst selection periods mm -hmm. ever mm -hmm. and you now you're doing sun sunrise no i think sunrise morning. was coming later mm -hmm. i just remembered it was lunchtime mm -hmm. and weekend prime yeah um and, and then it, life happened in kenya right it's heavy news all the time it's heavy news all mm -hmm. the time mm -hmm. so you're covering post election mm -hmm. um so i started becoming what was known as a breaking news anchor. Mm. And I don't quite remember, I think it was Farida once who told me, mm. we don't have an anchor. Mm -hmm. I need you to go into the studio. Mm. Ranaberg at the time was the ambassador. Mm -hmm. And there was this whole thing around the peace agreement that yeah. was being discussed and US, Kofi Annan yeah. was you know, mm. in the country a lot. So there was always a breaking story. And I think one of those breaking stories was Beatrice was at the US um, residence and they were having deliberations around peace. Mm -hmm. So I would, hand over to Beatrice, who would then hand over to me in studio. And then you know what you're told when you're in breaking news? First of all, you don't have an earpiece. At that time, there was a floor manager. And they're telling you, keep talking. What are you saying? Nothing. You don't and know what to say. And then it's you talk news. from the air, and then mm. you're live. So you just say, so as my colleague Beatrice has said, they so you are- you sort of repeat that. You repeat but that. Now you don't know what. And then you <laughs> turn to, you turn, you can't even turn, but from the corner of your eye, you see one of the other reporters coming yeah. to join you on set. Mm. And then you're told, that's done. <laughs> oh my god so you turn yes talam tell us about what's happening on the ground tell us about then you have a conversation mm. and you're in studio for three hours mm. you've mm. sweated for the entire country to see and there's just a very brief break like, there's no for yeah a for like a minute to take water night. to powder yeah. yeah so i remember the first time she's like hmm who may you can do breaking news so oh after that remember the unfortunate death of uh, laboso there was a plane yes. crash yes i did that so i started being told to do breaking news so i, I do breaking news sunrise I was able to refine it because it's four hours from mm. 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. That's a long period. And most of this is ad, ad yeah. lib, most. Yeah. Scripts are very few. Mm. I found that I could thrive on the adrenaline mm. of improv, mm. that I actually enjoyed mm. it. Oh, wow. Which, I don't know where that came from. You look forward to... Yeah. Like, I'd be like, oh my gosh, now I'm talking to Maxi about in. art. Oh my gosh, yeah. now I'm talking about Tunamu about this and that. But also because it's different. I mean, there's a hard hour. There's, there's sort a, of like an interview. Exactly. There's softer things as, the, I think as so. the morning unfolds. I think so. So mm. I started enjoying it. Mm. One of the highlights, I think, at KTN was when we did... After everything that happened with the post-election and the records, you know, the peace uh, agreement Leaves, and everything. Yeah. Mm. Because media were pretty guilty at that time. Mm. The station wanted to do something called a week of heritage and splendor. Mm -hmm. So the idea was to celebrate who we really are from mm -hmm. our arts, culture, food. Mm. So we actually hosted three bulletins in Masai Mara. By the way, mm. I don't even know if editors think like that anymore. Mm. Mm. Not that I'm throwing shade, mm. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying mm. Farida at the time mm. and Linus, I think that combination, mm. they were like, yeah, we can do news yeah. from Mara. Let's use our, let's use this platform. Yeah. Let's use the media too. To go there, but nobody's yeah. actually done a live broadcast, primetime news. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's been done again. Mm -hmm. Maybe it has. Mm -hmm. I'm saying the wrong thing. Yeah, we. But we so went many there. News as much. Yeah. yeah, or even like so. We went there with all the like, entire crew. The entire crew. It yeah. was a live Mara broadcast for three days. For three days, it was heaven. Another thing I should have mentioned is how much I'm a wildlife and nature fanatic, which yeah. is why Out and About was amazing oh, for yeah. me. Mm. I'd be like, oh my God, mm. elephants. Mm. Mm. So guys would be like, you know, you see elephants every week. I'm like, I don't care. I love the, them. This one is different. This one is different. <laughs> this one looks kinder. I know someone else who loves elephants. Is it? <laughs> and, and they see they see that difference in any... In, is this, in any, is this white? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's somewhere in the room saying, I'm right here. I can hear yeah. you. Elephants and wildlife, right? <laughs> Love and dolphins. I'm like, yo, yes, it's, it's the same animal. We need it's... to talk. <laughs> so, I'm a huge wildlife, yeah. Um, ask me anything, mm. the most random mm. things about wildlife. I'll mm. be like, oh my gosh, let me tell you about the Samburu Five. This is what they are, they're different from the cool. big five that we cool. have, kind of thing. That's really nice. So, reading news in Mara was literally like a yeah. piece of heaven. I was yeah. like, what is happening right now? But then, mm. uh, as you do that, the reading, what is anchorship? Because you're you're moving, mm -hmm. diff I mean you're moving and growing, and there is very different angles of it. There is mm. the reading news, there is the breaking news. There yes, is, there's reporting. <laughs> there's reporting. Do you also have to do a bit of the scripts? Yes, I, that's a good question. I think the reporters would work on the scripts, but you edit them or you review them mm. with the reporter mm. and make them your own. Mm. Or sometimes you just appreciate that they've done it, mm. but you have to internalize mm. it, understand it. Mm. So you'd go and ask the reporter. Tell me a little bit more about this story. Yeah. When we're talking about it, what kind of line do I need to add? Mm. So yeah, you'd still be involved mm. in mm. the scripting. Mm. Um, 
doing stories, writing stories and mm. reporting mm. is always the ultimate. If you can mm. do that, mm. everything else is kind of like a cherry on top, mm. but also breaking news is mm. a whole other mm. beast, mm. you know, so. So it's a lot of work though. Like it's a lot it's, of people would be like, so you just show up at night. I'm like, yeah, in which you world? just show up and start reading. That doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. It, that was back then. Mm. You'd show up and read because mm. it was, it was almost like, um, um, I don't know what the word is. You were celebrated for just being that person yeah. delivering yeah. the news. Ah, it started becoming like going there in the studio. No, but it's also, um, well, so I think it's, I don't know if it's glorious. I mean, mm. cause then at, I love what you're saying because you are deeply mm. involved in it. Mm. You know, you are deeply involved in mm. understanding the story. So if you are just appearing to read. Yeah. And I find a lot of the people, Christian and Mapo and the rest who are involved, are involved. Yeah. You, you can tell it's a difference from, you know, those ones who just come to read. No, but it's true because you're now more involved. You know, the backstory, mm. you know, you know, the context of the story. Yeah. So for sure. I mean, I, I did reporting not as much as I did anchoring mm -hmm. but it's because i was specifically for interviews breaking news and yeah. hosting yeah which is fine yeah for interviews which is the one that you remember mm -hmm.